Hey, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. So today we're testing the 2019 edition of the Toshiba Fire TV. It's a budget model and the latest edition of the Fire TV lineup, which includes Amazon Alexa support, as we'll talk about later. We bought the 55-inch version to test, but this 4K model is also available in 43 and 50-inch sizes. We expect this review to be valid for those other sizes. There's also a smaller 1080p version of this TV, but we haven't tested it and don't know how it performs. So, we're going to start by looking at the design of this TV. We'll then go over our test results for picture quality, motion handling, input lag and sound. Throughout this review, we'll be comparing to three other TVs and we'll finish with a summary of how they compare. If you'd like to skip straight to our tests or the comparison, then see the links in the description below. The design of the Fire TV is pretty basic, but it works well. Overall, it feels quite plasticky, but we don't expect most people to have any issues. The controls are located on the right-hand side of the TV, and the single button only allows changing inputs or toggling the power of the TV. Moving around to the side, the TV is a bit on the thick side. This means it'll stick out a bit when wall-mounted, but isn't too bad. Now, the back of the TV is also quite basic. There's no cable management, so it can look a bit messy, but if you really care, then you can use your own fasteners to tidy it up. The inputs are located on the left-hand side, and there's a slightly bigger selection than most new TVs. Along with the three HDMI ports, there's an optical and analog out, as well as a composite input for those with older devices. So now, moving back around to the front, we can look at the thermal image of the TV, which shows the location of the LEDs at the bottom. This is known as edge lighting, as the light from these LEDs is guided behind the screen to illuminate it, rather than being located directly behind. It doesn't make much difference though, as we'll talk about later. Now, we'll move on to the picture quality. We'll be comparing to currently available TVs, but competing models may change as new TVs are released throughout the year. For an updated comparison with new models as we buy and test them, see the review page on our website, which is linked down below. So first, the contrast. A high native contrast is important to produce deep blacks, especially for budget TVs like this Toshiba, as they lack more advanced features like local dimming. At about 3,500 to 1, the Fire TV offers a great result with deep blacks that's in line with most TVs that have the same VA panel type. As you see in the photo though, the black slide appears a bit blotchy, so depending on where you look at the screen, the black level varies. We'll talk about this in a minute. Overall, it's a great result, but if you really care about the deepest blacks on a budget TV, then the Hisense and Vizio do offer a bit better performance. Now, these blotchy areas visible around our test cross are known as black uniformity issues. Overall, this isn't too bad, but inconsistent blacks may be noticeable in the dark. They do vary between units due to tolerances in the manufacturing process, but this can indicate the level of quality control of manufacturers. If you get a bad result, you can always try to exchange the TV to get a unit that performs better. Now, Another indication of a manufacturer's levels of quality control is the grey uniformity of each TV. Grey uniformity issues can result in distracting areas known as the dirty screen effect, which is most visible when watching sports or playing games. The grey uniformity of the Fire TV is only mediocre, as there are some darker patches visible in this photo, as well as vignetting at the edges. All of these models offer fairly similar performance though, and it also varies between individual units. If you care about a uniform screen, then you may need to exchange your TV until you get one that you're happy with. So on to the viewing angles. A good viewing angle means that the image remains accurate when viewed at an angle, which is good for those who have wide seating. Unfortunately, this TV has bad viewing angles, as the image loses saturation and brightness. This is about typical of most TVs with VA type panels, so if you care about an accurate image for wide rooms, then a TV with an IPS panel like the LG UM6900 may be a better choice. So on to reflections. For those with a bright room, good reflection handling is important to prevent distracting glare. Unfortunately, the best reflection handling tends to be reserved for high-end TVs, and most budget models like the Fire TV tend to offer about the same performance. The result is fairly good as the semi-gloss finish diffuses reflections across the screen. It may be distracting for those with a lot of light though. Another important factor for those with bright rooms is the brightness of the TV. We measure the peak brightness of every TV on a real scene test pattern as well as on different sized white windows. At a max brightness in SDR of about 300 nits regardless of the content, it's pretty good and helps to overcome glare.
When watching HDR content, a high HDR peak brightness is also important to take advantage of the wider brightness range and produce highlights that really stand out. This TV has about the same brightness in HDR though and can't boost areas of the screen. This is fine and typical of most budget models, but means HDR content won't stand out as much as higher end TVs. Now, a wide color gamma is also important for the best HDR experience, as it allows the TV to take advantage of the wider color spaces in HDR. Like most budget models, the Fire TV can't really produce a wider range of colors though. While it can display HDR, saturated scenes end up looking less vivid, just like in regular SDR content. If you care about more saturated colors, then the Hisense H9F with a wider color gamut is a better choice. So now onto the motion handling. If you'd like to learn more about motion on TVs, then see our video series, which is linked down below. If you watch fast-paced content such as sports, or plan to use the TV for gaming, then a fast response time is important to reduce the amount of motion blur. This Toshiba TV has a fast response time, which is great for gaming. The response time of all TVs has been improving for a few years though, so it's in the same ballpark as the competition. You can also see duplications of our moving logo in this photo, which is a result of the backlight flicker. With a strange flicker frequency of 220Hz, it's not a multiple of most 60Hz games. This means there may be some visible but subtle motion artifacts. Most people won't notice this, so it isn't a big problem. Now, a low input lag is also important for gamers to reduce the delay between an action in-game and when you see it on the screen. Unfortunately, the Fire TV has more input lag than most other models, so it isn't the best choice for fast-paced gamers. On to the smart features. One of the biggest selling points of this TV is its integration into Amazon's ecosystem with the Fire TV platform. It works well and is easy to use. It can fully integrate with an Amazon Alexa device and can then control other IoT or Internet of Things devices. The platform works really well for Amazon services like Prime Video and Music, but also third parties like Netflix with a huge selection of apps. There's also now a native YouTube app, which is great. Now for the sound. The Fire TV has mediocre sound as it has a bad low frequency extension, so it lacks thump and rumble to the bass. It can get quite loud though. Overall, if you care about sound, then an external soundbar or speakers is the way to go. So overall, the 2019 Fire TV is a basic TV with tough competition. The TCL 4 series is another budget model from a relatively new but very popular brand. Compared to the Fire TV, the TCL offers a bit better picture quality with a better contrast ratio and a lower input lag for gamers. It doesn't get quite as bright though. For most people, the TCL is a better choice, but if you're already integrated into Amazon's ecosystem or are after a brighter TV for a bright room, then the Toshiba may be a better choice. The Hisense H9F is another highly competitive model, but it's a bit more high-end than the Toshiba. It offers impressive performance with the addition of local dimming to improve the dark scene picture quality. It also has better black uniformity and much lower input lag for gamers. If you don't care about swapping Alexa for the Android platform with Google Assistant, then it is the better choice for most people. The Vizio V series is also an interesting TV with similar performance to the TCL. It has a better contrast ratio and also better input lag for gamers. It uses a less traditional smart platform though, which is intended for casting directly from a phone or tablet. So that's it. What do you think of the Fire TV? Do you use Alexa and Amazon's other services? Let us know down below. You can check out all of our measurements on our website. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider on the website for access to our latest test results first. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. Thank you for watching and see you next time.